Welcome to the Aging Boomers. I'm your host, Frank Sampson. And of course, on this show, we discuss so many of the issues facing boomers, their parents, and what what we know is an aging population. I hope uh, everybody had a uh, a wonderful new year. And just want to remind everybody that today's show is sponsored by Senior Care Authority a professional senior placement and elder care management organization that has a national network of advisors to help in determining the right path for seniors, for senior living, and receiving proper care or even supervision. So whether it's in-home care, assisted living, residential or memory care, get the necessary advice from a senior care advisor in your area by calling Senior Care Authority at 888-809-1231, or you can Go to SeniorCareAuthority.com. And I just want to thank everybody for, again, for all their support. Uh, so many of you gone to iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher. So many have also downloaded the free app on your iPhone or Android phone to listen to the Aging Boomers. And we appreciate you doing that and, and sharing the information with friends and family because we just want to get the message out and have people uh, just have a better understanding of um, what they could be, what could be happening in their families in the future. So, you know, today's show, uh, we're kind of doing it a little bit different today. So it's usually me asking the questions and I have a guest on with the answers. Well, I do have a guest and uh, her name is Marcy Baskin. And uh, Marcy, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Frank. Uh, so Marcy and I um, work together. I, I mentioned Senior Care Authority as a sponsor, and uh, we work together uh, with that company. She also uh, was a founder of her own elder care management company called Elder Roads, uh, very well respected in the industry. And, and one of the key reasons, aside from her being just a wonderful person, uh, we're working together together. Uh, on so many initiatives and uh, so we wanted to use the show uh, to kind of reflect a little bit on the um, on, on the past year and and kind of I guess we we talk about it quite often Marcy and I and uh, even though we work hard we love this business and we want to talk about why we love this business and and uh, uh, hopefully educate some people as well and uh, kind of what brought on this idea uh, Marcy uh, wrote a um, uh, she wrote something to people in the industry which I'm gonna put her on the spot here and uh, I'm gonna have her read um, she she titled it a reflection or two and uh, so Marcy I'm putting you on the spot all right, I'd love you to read it to our uh, listeners, which I think will be, um, you know, uh, a starting point for us to uh, discuss so many of the things we'd like to share with others. So uh, I'll let you go ahead and read it. And kind, of what le- what, and, and kind of what led up to you writing this. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I am not a person who does New Year's resolutions because of, I won't say how many years of making them, I realize they don't work for me. I, I'm more of a person who reflects on the past year and it looks at what worked, what didn't work in terms of business and then personally how I have felt, where I have felt gratitude and pleased with what has happened in my life. And I just was moved on at the end of the year to send a letter to my colleagues uh, because we have a huge senior care community here in Sonoma County and um, I'm I marvel at the work that other people do so I just sat down and wrote something and sent it off to a lot of my colleagues and uh, never thinking I was going to be reading it out loud on the radio. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to share it with you, though. Well, just because you're reading it on a podcast that's listened to worldwide, big deal. <laughs> <laughs> a few more people, right? Yeah, right. I thought it was a lot to send it out to 100 people. <laughs> so, yeah, this is big. Okay, bear with me. A reflection or two. Holding an 85-year-old woman's hand, even if you don't know her, 
comforting a frightened child, being the kind of provider that listens and takes the time to know his or her patient, helping a dog, a cat, a horse, or another creature in need, assisting an elderly person in crossing the street with respect and dignity, becoming a foster or or adoptive parent, really seeing a person in spite of their dementia, caring for someone's child while she visits an ailing loved one, taking someone who cannot drive any longer to the symphony or a park or out for lunch, listening and really hearing about a complaint, a worry, a fear, helping a family figure out how to find affordable housing, shelter, food, clothing, sharing resources so that families know their options for residential care, financial assistance, care at home, raising money and organizing for a cause in which you believe, seeing someone as a mentor or teacher, even with advancing Alzheimer's disease, sitting with someone who is crying, grieving, in despair, and feeling okay about allowing that to happen, helping someone see their best self, sitting in silence while someone pours their heart out, asking someone to tell you their story and offering to write it down or record it, helping families organize their finances or the family home they may be leaving, acknowledging the caregivers who work so hard on behalf of our loved ones, dancing with an elder, delivering a home-cooked meal to someone who is homebound, or bringing a pet to visit them, seeing someone looking into their eyes and connecting in that place where no one is separate from anyone else, doing any of these things even when no one is looking. And so for five minutes, I stop doing, striving, thinking, planning, and give myself the luxury of gratitude. I will simply say that if you are receiving this, it is because in some small or large way, you have taught me something more about kindness, compassion, and generosity. These are qualities I value and aspire to, and I'm thankful to have them modeled for me in so many ways by so many people day after day. I see your work in the world, and I honor you for it. I'm overwhelmed at the pool of collective good you contribute. I bow to you, and I appreciate the privilege of being part of this big heart, big-hearted community. If you can stop for a moment and appreciate yourself for your part in this, that would be a very good thing indeed. That's, that's all. <laughs> that's uh, well. That's a lot. That's I don't know. I've I've read it a few times, and hearing you read it is just great. Uh, as I told you, done did a great job with it, and uh, thank you. I know many of the people in the industry love it, uh, loved hearing it. You know, we all, um, you know, especially uh, as we all know, uh, after the first of the year is uh, usually a pretty busy time for all of us because families have gotten together over the holidays and then they realize, well, you know, maybe mom or dad need a little more help and uh, turn to organizations like us for that help. So it's, it's just it's all it's always a uh, <clears throat> nice to hear so thank well, you for hopefully that hopefully there are people listening to your podcast who are the people i'm talking about right not specifically in this community but in <laughs> other senior care communities you yeah. know we work so hard and so fast and we're scrambling a lot um that we sometimes just forget mm-hmm. the impact that the work has and I think that was part of my goal in writing that, for people to remember their role in this. Yeah, I don't know many people and that get into this just for the money, all right? I mean, you, you just... There's <laughs> not enough money in it to be in it just right. for the money. Well, I mean, you, you, you can do, you know, you can do well in this industry, yeah. okay? But still, uh, it's not like... I don't know, maybe real estate or, you know, let's, you know, invest money in a property. Yeah. And, you know, the main goal there is dollars. Uh, here, you know, you certainly can make a good living in our industry, but at the same time, it's usually not the primary reason why someone becomes interested in it. I mean, you and I both have, 
you know, been through things with our own families, um, and we see it with other families, and 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 it's usually that's that's usually the catalyst for someone getting into yes, our I agree. into our business. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. 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 I agree. And although I haven't done a poll of how people have gotten into this business. It's my experience from meeting new people all the time who are professionals in the senior care community that a huge percentage of them were propelled in this direction, like you and like me, uh, by experience with our loved ones. And um, that makes it a very personal business. Yeah. At least for me. I think, you know, you talk about, you know, people aren't in it just for the money. Um... I agree because there is so much personal satisfaction in knowing that you're making a difference to a family who really doesn't know where to start. Mm-hmm. And that is the most common thing I hear when I when someone uh, goes to our website and contacts me. Uh, I, I, they say, I don't know where to start. What do I do now? And I feel fortunate in a way to have been through this on my own and then studying at Sonoma State and patient navigation and advocacy, I can help them figure out where to start. And sometimes that's what they need. Sometimes I refer them to other people in the community because they can better serve their needs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so satisfying. I have to say from a selfish point of view, it's very gratifying to do this work. Yeah. It, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, as you know, of course, we're you know our business uh, senior care authority we're franchising around the country and hopefully bring on others uh, with similar interests as you and I and in other communities to help people and right you know sometimes you you know uh, when I talk to them and they'll say well you know I ask them why they decided to get into this and are, are interested in it and it is usually because they've been through something with a loved one, a parent or, you know, a grandparent or whatever, uh, somebody else in their family. And uh, they see some of the challenges that families, th- that they themselves had. And my response to them, uh, similar when, when we first met and spoke, I, I say, unfortunately, that's... Uh, wonderful experience <laughs> unfortunately mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah uh, i mean wouldn't you agree do you, do you i mean you went through a lot you know yes. with your parents especially you know your mom and most recently and and uh, it, it had to help even though you've been educated uh in the field okay and you cur- mm-hmm. you know you've you've had some nice experience already and w- wouldn't you say that as I say, you, w- you wish you didn't have to go through it, but would you say that what you went through with your mom probably was the best experience for what you yes, had gone it, into? Yes, it was the best and the worst. Right, You right, know, I, yeah. I, at the time, the experience was one of being heartbroken, mm-hmm. but it propelled me to something, something bigger. And um, I always say when people say, well, where'd you get your training? Before I, any, before I say anything about any formal training, I say I went to boot camp for six years, and that's where I got my training. Um, and I, I didn't know where to start. And something new came up monthly that I didn't know where to turn to figure out how to solve a problem. And I had to do all that without the help of people like us because, frankly, Elder care management, in in the way that I'm practicing it, it's very new. Um, helping people, being a professional who helps people navigate the the medical community or navigate the options for uh, residential care or navigating finding home care and what do you have to do to your home if you're going to have home care. There weren't many people doing that when I was going through it because I would have. I I would have run to them and mm-hmm. begged them to help me. Yeah. So it's it's good to see that there are people other people uh, people other than myself who are doing this work. Um, so what, what would yeah. you what, what do you think? I mean, I, I tell people 
uh, if they if they say, well, what you know, what are the right qualities for this type of work? You know, what comes mm-hmm. to mind right away is being a great. You need to be a great listener. You need to be, of course, empathetic, uh, compassionate. Anything else you could think of? I mean, or I mean, uh, well, your thoughts on I, this? I would have said what you said. The the number one quality is being a good and active listener. And it's the only way that you can find out who's sitting in front of you. And the second part of the listening is to learn how to keep my own agenda out of this situation, my own judgment or my own feeling about what I think, what I think they should do. I have to learn who that person is so I can try and um, help them in a way that's meaningful. Um, sometimes I come across families, and actually I come across it a lot, where there are two or three or four siblings and they are not in agreement. And, you know, there are family dynamics that have been in place for probably 50 years or more. And I might have an opinion about what I see in that room, but it's irrelevant. I have to, My job is to facilitate the conversation they need to have to make a plan to take care of mom or dad. And... That's all to me. That's all part of being a good listener. Yeah, no, it's it's extremely important. I mean, I I know there's times that I, you know you, you sit with family, and ninety percent of the time you're doing listening, they're doing the talking, and afterwards they go, "Thank you so much. You're wonderful." And I'm thinking, <laughs> right. I'm, well, right. No and and I'm thinking, I'm thinking to, to myself, what did I do? I didn't do much. I just listened. You know, but that's sometimes what needs to be done. You know, it's huge. It's yeah. huge. And, and uh, you know, I think active listening is a skill that you develop. Right. And not, not listening in a way that while the other person is talking, you're winding up to think about what you're going to say next. You know, just totally being present for what they're saying and noticing what's going on for them. Yeah. And I, I would suspect that most of the people that we work with in this community, the professionals, would say the same thing. I don't think anyone actually would disagree that listening in that way is really important. You know, I've been so, I've been excited this past year about working together with you and, um, you know, kind of taking the best of both of what we do and and, Mm -hmm. and putting them together strategically. Uh, And I'm, I'm just so so excited about the upcoming year because I think we've done a lot of uh, work together and testing and and uh, you know I, I I'll give you my version of it and then you could uh, you know expound upon it but uh, okay. you know Marcy is, is is as she said she's uh, done uh, what we call elder care management and working with families and helping them with so many of the things that she described in her reflection that she, that she read uh, first part of the show. And um, uh, while uh, the organization that I started um, was concentrated more on helping people uh, with family members who need to uh, find a place to live and get proper care. So whether it be mm-hmm. assisted living or what we call smaller residential care homes, they're all over the country. Um, but but taking our two together in a sense and putting them together uh, because sometimes, uh, you know, we, we may have a family that doesn't just need assisted uh, assisted living. You know, they might need help in other areas, like she said, maybe finding in-home care, um, and, and so many, so many other things that uh, we can help with. So, um, we've been working together jointly on with with families, and it's worked out extremely well uh, to the yeah. point that now, with our franchise model, we're incorporating uh, Marcy's. Um, uh, elder management concept that she developed um, and and teaching others around the country. So I can't tell you how excited I am about it. 
Yeah, I, I I am too, even though it, it has taken me a long time to just really wrap my brain around what we're doing. I'm, I'm glad that we didn't jump into something that looked exciting, that we really thought it through wow, yeah, and right. talked about it ad nauseum, um, but it helped me to have a clear vision of what we're doing. And what's really exciting to me is that a family could come to us needing as you said, they could need residential care, they could need some facilitation of difficult conversations. Um, Mom won't talk about her advanced directive. She needs to have one, and let's find a way to make that happen. Um, We want to keep mom at home. What does that mean? Well, it's not just getting a caregiver. There's also, um, well, where do we put the grab bars in the house, and how are we going to, how is her wheelchair going to go down those two steps? And we can provide them with resources who can make those things happen. Um, So I think it's a very fresh and innovative model to have placement married to elder care management because in my mind, it's all elder care management. And, um, And one of the things that an elder care manager does was help a family figure out where their parent is going to live or their sibling or their spouse. Um, so that's what's exciting to me. They don't have to run around to three or four different places or, or start Googling, um, uh, modifications for your home if your mother lives there or something. Um, we have all that information at our fingertips Mm -hmm. and resources are really important. And if you think about the people who come to us, I think it's safe to say that they all are overwhelmed in one way or another and to different degrees, but they're overwhelmed. And if you think about a time, Frank, when you've been overwhelmed, you're not doing your best work. Right. I was completely overwhelmed trying to figure out my mom's care. And because of my overwhelm and not having any support, it, I was not a good consumer when I was trying to find the right things for her. I asked more questions about buying a dishwasher than I did about the place where I was going to trust them to take care of my poor mom who had Alzheimer's disease. So when I look back on it, I think, you know, how did that happen? So that's why I wrote my book. Because if you're, I wrote a book called, uh, well, you know this, Frank, but your listeners might not. It's called Assisted Living Questions I Wish I Had Asked. Mm-hmm. And it's over 200 questions, and it's a little tiny book. You can bring it with you when you're looking at a residential uh, home, care home, and ask the questions. I I only thought of these questions after the fact. So, you know, the book, the resources, our knowledge of the best care homes in our counties, um, those are all tools that we have at our disposal and so I'm excited that they're all under one roof. Yeah. And I, I hope people are excited about it as well and understand that they can get all this in one place. You know, it's interesting, uh, again, when I talk to people who are interested in coming in the business, uh, they say, you know, I, I love working with seniors. And I, I, I think so many of us do. Uh, I want to believe all of us do. Um, and and you do work closely with seniors, uh, uh, probably more on the elder care management side that we're talking about than even on the placement side. Would you agree? Because on the placement side, I, I would say most of our work, though we do meet and, and, and try to understand the needs of the senior, uh, the majority of the time we're working with the adult children. And, and when we talk about people being you know stressed it's usually those adult children and and many times these are people in their 50s 60s Mm -hmm. 70s i've dealt with adult children in their early 80s (laughs) wow but but for the the most part we're talking people in their 50s and 60s -hmm. but would you agree with that uh, do, do, do you agree that, the, you know, that uh, you're mainly working with adult children, maybe on the elder care management, you could be Absolutely. working a little more with the seniors? Well, you know, the family <laughs> meetings that I have, 
<coughs> may or may not include the elder. I prefer it if it does, but sometimes, and I'm sure you you understand why, it's not appropriate. And um, the families are the ones who are well and capable and are going to make it happen for their mother or father. So, yes, I think working with families is a huge part of what I do. Yeah. And families need help. I, I refer, I am not a therapist, and I have referred families out for family therapy and most of them don't take any of my referrals but some of them have because there's this place where it switches from finding resources and actively listening and getting to know the seniors needs where it and 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 really noticing what's going on in the room with the adult children if and it's a, there's a point that I notice where it switches to these people need a therapist and and so you know that also goes to the point is when we when we have a situation that it's not in our bailiwick to help then we know exactly who to send people to and it's mm-hmm. up to them if they'll do it or not um I, but I, yeah i feel like we have a really good handle on the resources that are out there right i sometimes think we are therapists though we're not professionally and trained as therapists sometimes i think we are but uh I know. I know exactly what you mean. We, well, we sometimes them, we, it's the closest thing to therapy. Exactly. Someone's going to get to. You know, uh, um, we're not called therapists, and we aren't therapists. Um, so I think it's less threatening. There's something about telling someone to go. You know, suggesting therapy if they have not had experience with it that feels a little judgmental or like there's something wrong with them or. You know, but we're easy. We're just people exactly like them. We've been through what they've been through, our own version of it. And we saw the need for helping people who are in that situation. And, boy, that feels good when you know you've either helped them find a really good place for for their parent to live or you have found the best caregiver in the world for them at home. Um... I had one client that I referred to one of my colleagues who actually, he's an architect, and he has a business doing home modifications, and they didn't even know what they might need, and he's Mm -hmm. an expert, so I brought him in, he did it, he built it, they were really happy with his work because he's a very skilled project manager, and uh, I mean, when I got into this, I never thought about doing things like that. You know, I, I thought mostly of care coordination, which is a big part of what I do. Yeah. Um, and, and we don't have the time, but there's a whole other piece of this care management that, are, that involves care coordination, which is where our medical system is going so that somebody is being a quarterback. Yeah. And I have a lot of families I've worked with where I became a quarterback. And I'm not into football, so I didn't even know what a quarterback <laughs> was. Well, until, listen, I... Until someone we, told me that, yeah, you're like a quarterback. Yeah, we should have made this an hour show, but uh, unfortunately, we're, we're out of time. Yeah. But uh, it was... You know, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm so much looking forward to the upcoming year, working even more closely together with you and helping uh, so many people out there. And thanks for everything you do. And, you know, uh, we'll, 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 of course, I'm going to have you on again, and we'll talk more, so... Okay, Thanks grateful so for the opportunity, Frank. Yeah, thank you very thank, much. And thank, thank you all again for joining us on the Aging Boomers. Uh, again, uh, you go to our uh, website, agingboomers.com. You could go uh, d- download the Aging Boomers uh, app on your iPhone or Android phone, uh, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, all sorts of things, so all sorts of ways to get it. So thanks so much for joining us. Be safe out there, and we'll talk to you all soon.